the last time I had a video that had the proper sidebar badge on it is six months ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a while since uh, since the main one, but it's up. It's doing well. People seem to like it. It's doing really well. Yeah, you know, you never know what kind of reaction you're going to get from these these videos. It's always one of those things of like, oh god, hold up, hold your breath, uh-huh. upload it, see if people like it. But it's been pretty positively received. People seem happy in the comments. So. Yeah, <laughs> it only took half a year. Well, it also took a vacation too, right? Yeah, so behind the scenes for the production of this, I'd mentioned in the last few episodes how I felt really tapped out, particularly over the holidays, and was just I was just having a hard time kind of getting back into the actual flow of work. And so I did make the decision at the end of January, of like, okay, it's time to play the winning card here of... I'm going to go on a vacation in case of emergency. Bright glass. Yeah, of course. Of course. Now my whole brain is just filled with magic metaphors. So I'm like, what would be the casting cost of vacation, and what would that card do? Your tweets <laughs> are absolutely nonsensical. Like every now and then, it, to me, it looks like you've been hacked now because you say this stuff. Let me get an example of this: legendary artifact creature equipment jellyfish. Yeah. I was like, I saw you tweet this the other day. I was like, what the fuck? What is that? Uh, and then I looked in the replies and was like, oh, it's magic. Okay. So yeah, every, everything is like magic metaphors in my brain now. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, play Greycation. What, what would that be? Like three blue and a white, take an extra turn, something like that. I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm all right. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'll, I'll let people in the comments come up mm-hmm. with what would Greycation be as a card. But yeah, this is always my just basically always works trick and i felt like i'm just having too much of a hard time getting back into a good rhythm of work i was just being too inconsistent about it and just very frustrated and so yeah i ended up taking a vacation it was a very funny one for me because i actually just stayed in london it was the first time i've done this since back when i was a teacher but yeah i just picked a hotel in a different spot in the city and went there for 10, 12 days in the end. And yeah, this is my, okay, you arrive and the trick is to sort of show up with a particular mindset of, this is serious time brain. Look, you can see how serious we are because we're in a different location. We've gone through a minor pain in the butt of packing up and traveling and going to this spot and... Now we're going to stay in this room, and I know you want to wander all over the place, Brain, but that's not going to happen. We're just in this room. We've brought our nice keyboard. I've set up like a weird standing desk situation, and this is what we're going to do. We're just going to work on this stuff. And yeah, it's extreme, but I always find like these are just the absolute most productive times for me is when I really kind of seal off in this. And like this time, it's also really good to reboot and just get back into the the proper habit of working. And with this video in particular, there was one problem that I was having, which was I have rarely had a video where getting the audio right was just so hard Mm -hmm. and... Personally, this is my least favorite part of making all of the videos is recording the audio. It's the it's the one time in the process where I feel a huge resistance. Like I just never want to record the final audio. Part of that is because it's like, well, now it's actually locked in. You can't make any changes. This is just the way the video is going to have to be. And part of it is I just hate it and I find it really hard. But with this one, my final count was I did three recordings, each of which were three takes. So it took a total of nine takes before I got audio that I liked. And the final version that went up on the YouTube channel was a combination of the last three takes. On average, the number of takes I have to do for videos has slowly gone down over the years. But this was just like a sudden explosion in, oh, it's all wrong. And part of it is also in the process of making these videos, I do a a rough audio first that we do rough animations to, to try to just spot if there's any problems in the script. And even the rough audio, I was like, oh God, I hate it. I hate it so much. It's just not working at all. Anyway, the trick that I figured out with this one was... So if you've watched a bunch of my videos, you'll know that there is a 
wide range of the speed of how fast I talk. Sure. And my general rule here is that if I'm talking very fast, it's because the viewer doesn't need to follow the details. I'm just trying to give an overview of, oh, look, this stuff is really complicated. You don't need to know all the details. It's fine. We're just going to quickly blast through it. And that's what talking fast is to the listener. It's like an indication of you're not supposed to remember all these details. What I realized afterwards what the problem was is I thought that this video was a fast talking video. And it's partly because I thought this isn't actually like a huge topic. This is fairly constrained as topics go. So when I would record the audio and it was long, I'd go, oh, I shouldn't have this 10 minute audio thing here. I should talk way faster. Like this should be a six minute video. And so I would, uh, the basically the first takes that I did, the first six were all too fast. And I realized afterwards, no, it does need to be slow because even though this is a video, which is sort of talking about the system is complicated. I think I didn't realize for a bit, oh, the first 80% of this I really do want the listener to follow all the details. Like, yes, there's a lot of stuff, but I was just going through it too fast. So right. I ended up slowing down my narration by about 30% for the last few takes. Oh, okay. This is way better. Like, I don't know why I had it in my head that this should have been a much shorter video and should have been a much faster video. This one, the viewer actually can follow what's happening in the first 80%, but that ate up a bunch of my greatcation time was just forcing myself to do the recordings and then also edit them together, which is really time consuming, and then have to make the decision at the end of each sort of two day period of like, oh, I just don't think this audio is good enough and then do it again and then do it again before I finally got the final audio. So yeah, sometimes you just really need to force yourself into a situation where you're gonna do the work and this was definitely necessary this time. There's a lot of information in this one. Yeah, that that's why like the fast talking just didn't work yeah. as much. And I just don't know why I thought that it would. <laughs> but I'm very glad I slowed it down. And uh, I think it's been well received partly because of that. I think it would not have been nearly as well liked if I was blasting through at my original pace. Was Do you remember if the version you sent me, was that the final audio or did you give it another go after that? I think I sent you the version with the audio as it currently is. Okay. I'm fairly certain about that. I think it didn't have music, but I can't remember. It had music. It was okay. too loud. That was my... Oh, right. That's right. You didn't like the... Mu you thought the music was too loud. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, anyway. Maybe it, I don't remember. Because I found that it was hard to me to keep track of what was going on. Because it's a lot of information. And also, I mean, I don't know how this... If this video plays differently. Like, I don't know the basics of any of this. Like, I'm not American. Like, I don't have any institutional knowledge about the interstate highway system. I do wonder if this video plays differently in different places, maybe more than some others. Do you care intrinsically more about this if you're American? Probably. Well, so you've, you've actually hit on something in the production process of this. Right. But I'm kind of curious. I should have asked you at the time, how did this play to you as someone who is just totally unfamiliar with this? And till recently has never even driven right like yeah. are you, you still do you have a driver's license yet you still don't no. right no, yeah no okay license. there we go <laughs> uh to me it was kind of like i will say this one washed over me a little bit mm -hmm. where i was like okay i thought it was pretty and i was entertained but i didn't care about it yeah that makes total sense and i can imagine that i maybe have a similar view but i bet that you have a lot of listeners in america who really care like this one seems like one of those videos where there's two Types of people, mm -hmm. people that really care and people that don't care because it's just like this information is not interesting to me to keep in the long run. But like it was intriguing. My favorite part about it was just you going through all of the parts where it didn't make sense. That's what I liked. No, that, that stuff is always fun. Just looking through the data. And so about half of the views come from the United States. Is that any different to other videos? It's higher, but it's not right. a lot. It's, I'm okay. just, just quickly glancing around. It looks like 40% of the videos are normally from the United States. So it's higher, but it's not crazy higher. Mm. But I've given up guessing with the statistics on YouTube videos of like, what are <laughs> videos going to be like? That doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't mean it. Well, we, okay, we have that information. We can draw a conclusion from it. But really, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, no, some of them are very funny. Mm -hmm. Your like being someone who's not familiar with the interstates is part of what kind of came up in the process of making this video. So part of the difficulty of making these kinds of things is 
As always, when the final video goes up, it always looks really simple. And that's what's supposed to be the case. You as the viewer are supposed to watch a video and I feel like I succeed if the impression that people have is a little bit like, oh, that was straightforward and simple and sort of feeling like it shouldn't have taken him much time to put together that video at all. Like I understand why people have that feeling mm -hmm. because that's what the final presentation should be. Here's a bunch of information it's all in a nice order. It's so like it goes down nice and smooth and it wraps up exactly when it's supposed to be. But as always, before the video was written, when you're just looking at a blank page and you're trying to write a script about something, it is not remotely clear at all what even is the video. And so part of what took a really long time with this one is exactly this question that sort of you're hitting on is, I didn't actually describe at any point, yeah, but what are the interstate highways? Why are they different? Why are they a thing of any interest whatsoever? Like, mm. it's just a bunch of roads. And in my earlier versions of the script, there was a ton of stuff which was setting up, yeah, but what are the interstates? Why are they different? Why are they worth talking about in the first place? So why would this numbering system even be something that anybody cares about? But as the script went on and on and I kept doing more and more revisions, I kind of cut down that further and further mm. and further and further until at some point I made a decision, which was, okay, you know what? This is a video for people who already know what the interstates are. They're already familiar with them. I don't think that if you explained it all to me that I would necessarily have cared any more about the interstate highway system. See, I disagree. I think I could have made you care more if I yeah. had put more of that stuff in. <laughs> I'm not, but like I enjoyed, I liked the visuals of this one and I liked the weirdness part of it. Mm. But what I mean, it's just think if you would have spent all that time explaining to me the history of the interstate system, I don't, th it's like two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think that the second part would have necessarily been enhanced by the first part for me. This is why it ended up getting split. Yeah. Is because I thought, you know what? This just, this doesn't work in here. And this is the problem when you make stuff. You're like, you find all of this information that you love or like little facts that you go, oh, that's totally delightful. There's one piece of information I was just desperately trying to work in anywhere in the script and it was just completely impossible and if you've ever written something this is something over the years that i try to keep in mind is like that's a warning sign like if there's a piece of information that you keep going like where 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 can i put this in the answer is don't put this in you personally like it too much and it doesn't actually belong in this mm -hmm. thing it should be easier to put it in if it actually belongs here. And the little fact is that the interstate highway system was partly built for the American military. And so a lot of the specifications about how these roads have to be relates to what the military wanted. Huh. And one of the things that was in the original specification in, uh, I'm just doing this off the top of my head, so the dates might not be exactly right, but like the 1950s. No one fact checks this show, you're fine. <laughs> Listen, Mike, people love to fact check everything that I do. So it's just like, <laughs> I've got this whole world of people who, who like to catch errors and I totally get it. But so the original specification for the highway was all of the bridges that go over the interstate uh -huh. have to have... 14 feet of vertical clearance and the way they came up with 14 feet was that was the height necessary to move the at the time intercontinental nuclear ballistic missiles around oh good news we need to drive these nuclear missiles around it we need 14 feet of vertical clearance on all of the bridges you don't want to bump a nuke do you you don't want to bump a nuke that's exactly <laughs> right and <laughs> So the Department of Transportation <laughs> like gave all the funding to these local states and the project was like hugely under development. And then at some point in like 1968, the military came back and said, hey, we've made our nukes way bigger. We need 17 feet of clearance now on all of the bridges. And to this day, the United States is still retrofitting a bunch of the bridges that they built at 14 feet to make them 17 feet to fit the nukes. 
Jeez. It is as this enormous project of, oh, we built a ton of bridges for 14 feet of vertical clearance, and now we need to make them 17 feet for the bigger nukes that the military wants to move around. I love that piece of information. And I was like, I desperately want to fit this in because it's just funny. You can also kind of imagine it visually as like the stick figure girls arguing with each other about like, but my nukes are bigger. Like you need to make your bridges bigger. I had a bunch of stuff about that, about like what is the interstate Mm -hmm. really? Like what is this connected to? But it all just slowly got cut over time. But that nuke one, I was like, I was holding on to that one at the bitter end. I was like, there's got to be a way I could squeeze this in. But the answer is no, don't do that. Instead, just accept that for some videos, it makes sense to not actually explain the whole thing. There are just times when you have to recognize, okay, just make the thing for people who already know about the thing. I have tried for years as a style guide to work with videos like assume that the viewer is an intelligent person who just for whatever reason has happened to never come across this topic before. And so like when I'm writing scripts, I really do try most of the time to think, assume that the person doesn't know anything at all about this and explain it from the start. Right. But with this one, I think it made sense as I kept drafting the script to get rid of all of this other stuff about the interstate and just be like, you know what? Not every video really can be for everyone. This works better as a video for people who are already familiar with this, which would be basically everyone in America where driving on the interstates is already a big deal part of your life. Like right. Everyone right. knows these roads. There's basically nowhere in America where you aren't constantly hyper aware of when you are on or are not on the interstate. And it's just like, you can just assume that this is knowledge all Americans have about the interstates and just run with it. Be like, hey, there's a thing about this thing that you probably never knew, which is that the numbers mean something. And then just purely focus on that part. And again, I know that all of this stuff sounds really obvious in retrospect once you have seen the video. But it's hard to explain how it is not obvious at the start what part is the part that just makes sense to focus on. I know that this information exists in a really clear way, I assume, for you to take it you know, and, and make a script out of. But I would imagine that the fact checking for this one would be hard because I feel like this is one where there's lots of little details that people living in those places know and you have to get it right to be happy. Was it difficult to get this one like nailed down? Uh, Let me back up just one moment there because if you think about this topic, yeah, you are right. Like you can go on the Wikipedia page about the interstate highway system and then there is just a section which explains the numbering system. Like that's relatively straightforward. I mean, and there's maps too. That's what else I'm thinking, right? Like for you to actually get the routes and where they start and end right you just look at maps yeah that exists yeah i think part of what i was talking about before of the how do you make this go down easy like how do you make a video that is easily understandable is when you're reading something about this numbering system you have the advantage of it's much easier to jump back and jump ahead if you don't understand something So you can go like, oh, okay, you read this part and you go ahead and then you realize, oh, I needed something from before and then read that bit again. Like when you read something, you're reading it less linearly than you think you're reading it. And so if you want to make a video that is interesting and also understandable, you can't just take, oh, here's the Wikipedia summary and basically read it. Like, I just don't think that makes for a really interesting video. And you you have to figure out what order am I explaining this? presuming that someone can't go backwards. And that's why in this video, it took me a while to break it down into making up these three categories of interstates of like, oh, there's majors and there's mediums and there's minors, which don't really exist as official designations or anything like that's that's not really a thing it's like a category i came up with because i was thinking about constellations and like ursa major and ursa minor and it's like okay great i'm gonna go with that Mm -hmm. right because we have like this constellation theme but that's where it's actually harder to do it in video form than you think of like what is the order in which you can kind of present this to people so that each thing 
hopefully builds on the last thing. That's why you start with like, here's the big broad ones going east to west, right? Which just even visually is the most clearest. Like these roads are going across. And then you have these roads going up and down. And then you like you jump over to the miners, which then makes sense to say, okay, these are the little bits that break off. And then you can kind of go back to the mediums as like, these are the ones that are in the middle. But even creating these categories helps a listener know we've moved on to a different kind of thing. Like it's a, it's a little signal, like that part is over. Here's the next part. Hopefully this part builds on it. So like, like that's part of the, that's part of the trick of it. And I think also having, it's not really necessary, but even just having some kind of additional metaphor, like, oh, it's, it's navigations, it's constellations. I think that does help give your brain something else to hold on to, to like pin this explanation to as, mm-hmm. as it exists. So yeah, like there's, there's some tricks that might not be obvious when you're just watching the video and, and hopefully it feels like, oh, that was great. And that was simple. And that was straightforward. And then when you go and read the Wikipedia page, you feel like, oh, okay, this, this makes total sense, but you've also now heard it once before. But yeah, fact checking this kind of thing is ever since the Tikoi incident, like we've definitely tuned up the the fact checking for sure. But stuff always gets through. Like when I think about the sort of mistakes that that get through in the videos, I do have a bunch of levels. Like I talked about this in the CGP Gray was wrong video about like, oh, there's sort of different ways to categorize what kind of mistakes can there be. But even within those categories, I sort of subdivide things so there are a few things in this video which i would regard as blunders that made it through but they're all on a level where it's like i think it's fine there's typos typos to me are the kind of blunders where it's so small i just i'm not wildly concerned it's like i spell san francisco wrong at one point in the video it's like that's fine i I can live with san francisco having two c's in it (laughs) wait but it has two. C- no, I see what you did. I see. No, I. See, I then put two C's in my head. Did you put a C after the N? Is that what you did? No, there's no S. It's like sent. There's. It's just San two Francisco. C's. Yeah, San Francisco. Um, I like that. Yeah, that. That's also one of those cases where by the time the video was actually published, something like a dozen people had seen the video, and exactly zero people had spotted that San Francisco was typed wrong, including me and everyone working on the video and everyone else I showed it to. So it's like, that's fine. I can live with that. The ones that are that are not so obvious for people is pronunciation errors. There's a couple of places where I just pronounce the name wrong, and this is one that is always frustrating because... It's also one of these cases where it is, if you're not from the place, it can be surprisingly hard to try to find what is the correct local pronunciation of this town name. I was going on YouTube for some of them trying to find like local news broadcasts from the town to be like, how are they saying the name? But you can end up getting like a bunch of different ones. And then there's just the actual problem of the performance of it, where... When you say it, when you're recording it, you can still just mess it up sometimes and get it wrong. So I think the worst one in there is, I say, Penumbra, North Dakota. I looked at that. I cannot tell you how many times with Mm -hmm. listening to the pronunciation guides. I know that there is no R sound in that town name. It didn't stop me that every time I said it in all of the recordings, like I said it wrong in a slightly different way. And I had to just go with... Well, I'm going to take the take. That's the least wrong take. It's like, I'm sorry. Pem. Oh God, I can't even do it now. Like Pembina, North Dakota. I'm very sorry that I got you wrong. I tried. I swear I tried, but it just ended up with an R that doesn't exist there. Hmm. You're always going to run up against this kind of local knowledge. And yeah, it's, it's extremely hard being on the other side of the world to try to like nail all of that stuff down. I don't think it makes any difference that you're here rather than there for it being easier. Hard. I guess what I mean is it would be easier if I lived in the town, right? Then I well, would yeah, like, oh, okay, exactly. yes. <laughs> yes. If you, but that, that's kind of my point of why I thought this one might be tricky is that there is that exact thing of there are lots of people that are intimately familiar with the places and the routes that you're talking about. Like, for example, I'm very sure that some of the weird roads that you've mentioned, if you actually drive them, 
oh, like you say it ends here. But actually, there's like a little way, you know, like if you're from that area, you're like, oh, no, it, it's not as simple as that. This is also like what stuff do you include in the video and what stuff do you don't include in the video? And uh, there's a lot of things that were not included. And one of them is that a lot of places are dual signed. So a road will be, oh, this is actually two interstates at the same time. And then you can you can also run into some weird situations where a route is dual signed in the sense that this is both of the interstates, but they only have one sign for which interstate it is there. Mm -hmm. You can run into an opposite problem where like I've seen some people leave comments for like local areas where they go like, oh, uh, you said this road is interstate whatever, but it isn't. It's actually like U.S. route this. I am aware of that, but it is because there isn't a sign saying that that is interstate whatever. But I looked it up. It's like, yes, but the state receives federal funds. <laughs> so this is to, even like, worse. <laughs> yeah. Where people think you're wrong. Yeah. So but actually. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Th this is the case for, there's a section where I talk about the interstates in Maryland. And it's like, I knew this was going to happen, but I just wasn't going to explain it in the video of saying, oh, Maryland has all of these interstates, but people in Maryland going like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like this interstate isn't there. Yeah. It's because it is a federal interstate, but it is not locally labeled as such. But I just, I like, I just cannot possibly get into this at this point in time and discuss discuss all of these That's things. That's funny. The other one that has come up sometimes is I've seen a few people message me about getting the state highways wrong. In the beginning, I, I mentioned like, oh, there's US routes 50 and 60. And several people have messaged me like, ha ha, like you got the states backward. No, they're in the right order. The US routes go in the opposite direction. They're numbered top to bottom instead of bottom to top. I just didn't discuss it in the video, which I do in retrospect think like I probably should have mentioned that. But there's, again, there's just so many things like what can you possibly mention? That stuff is fine. Like I don't mind that. But it is funny where you get people who will correct you about something and you're like no actually it is the opposite way but i totally understand why it superficially looks wrong but then there's just totally frustrating stuff where you do get something wrong like i have an error in the video which i think is the worst one but is also completely understandable when you hear this which is that i show the route i-76 which ends in i say belmar new jersey and so on the map, it shows like, oh, here's I-76 and where it goes in Belmar, New Jersey. But it turns out there's two towns called Belmar and Belmar in New Jersey. Wait, so can one, you spell the difference for me? Because that sounded the same. <laughs> one of the towns is Belmar, B-E-L-M-A-R. The other town is B-E-L-L-M-A-W-R. Right. Oh, come on, New Jersey. What are you doing? <laughs> what is that? Right. So th that's one of these things where it's like, yeah, I totally that that is a mistake. But that is also one of these cases where it is very understandable that both me and the animator who drew the map and the two official fact checkers I have checking everything they possibly can in the script. All of us missed that, but I feel like that's on New Jersey. Like, I'm sorry. You shouldn't I can't have be these responsible two for your decisions. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, every time I, I see that in the future, I'm going to be annoyed of like, oh, God damn it. It's, it's the wrong Belmar. It should have been Belmar, or I don't even know how to say the second one, but they're on different sides of the state, which is why local people notice immediately. They're like, oh, yeah, I 76 doesn't go all the way across New Jersey. It only goes to the west side in Belmar. I guess that's what the W is for. It's west for Belmar, west New Jersey, and <laughs> Belmar without the W is east New Jersey. I do have to say, on the opposite side, what's really fun is when people can add local information that there is just no way I could have ever possibly found out. Okay. In the video, I make a quick reference to the interstate highway splits for it's I-35, where it's this one exception where they have east and west branches and no other interstate does this east-west numbering. And I could not for the life of me figure out what the reason was. And I just kind of guess and say it in the video like, oh, this feels like one of these political situations where there's two rival cities right next to each other neither one wants to be the one that's on the bypass and so this 100 percent feels like a political decision of going fine we're just gonna do it east and west and so neither of you is the bypass 
except I've gotten information from people who live in the towns about how they really know which one is the bypass because the mile markers continue being numbered in the correct way on one side, on either the east side or the west side, and the mile number markers start over on the opposite side. Aha, if you're a local, you totally know which one is the bypassed city and which one is the real city. So I really love that, like when people can add information that it's like, if I had spent a thousand years researching this script, I would never have come across that piece of information. But someone living locally can make it more fun. As the years have gone on, there is just a crazy amount of pressure that is very hard to explain of you're going to make a video on a topic. You're not an expert in that topic, but also you know almost every expert in the world will end up watching this video along with potentially a couple of million other people who will also have random information they can add to the topic. I just cannot explain what the pressure of that feels like. Yeah, it seems horrible. It is something that over the years has definitely increased yeah. and did a big step function increase after the Tikoi incident. Well, yeah, I mean, this is that thing that I think we've spoken about a lot since then, which is mm -hmm. it's not necessarily my challenge to you, but it is a point that I bring up, which is like, you have made it worse for yourself. Oh, yeah. In that you refuse to be comfortable with even the smallest errors. Because, I mean, going back to Tikoi, again, it's like you consider that error to have been massive. 99.99999% of the world would not. Like, it wasn't really that important for that video that you said that this place had a different type of rocket than what it actually had. So then it's like, as well as the world putting its pressure on you, you put pressure on yourself, mm. which then makes the world put more pressure on you. And it just continues from there to like be correct. But I don't think I would be any different if I was in your shoes because at the point where you are, with the type of stuff that you make videos about, you are right that like, you have to become an expert in everything. And that seems horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's a bit different. Like, it's not that I'm an expert, right? But I play one on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, there, there is some truth to that. Yeah, I'm not an expert, but I play one on YouTube is not wrong. For those 10 minutes, do you have to be that? Yeah, I think I would rephrase it like, oh, I need to become temporarily one of the best informed laymen on this topic. Mm -hmm. And again, not so much with this video, but with other stuff I've worked on and, and stuff that I am working on. There is also this problem, which I think is really not obvious to people about experts in the field disagree. And so one of the skills you have to learn, which is... Very weird and also very demoralizing about the whole world is you have to become good at picking which expert do you think is the reasonable expert in a field where you are not an expert, which can be kind of crazy making sometimes when people disagree with each other. That's common sense, right? I guess is what you're talking about here, though. You're using your gut. How else would you do it? Yeah, I think using your gut is too simple. I think I have some like basic heuristics that are helpful in this, but they're a little, they're a little bit difficult to articulate. Well, I don't think you could, even if you tried. The best I can do just off the top of my head is I'm looking for experts who are consistent across other domains as well. You're looking for the expert who also doesn't seem to contradict any of the areas that they're butting up against. Now, of course, that's a recursion problem of, well, how do you know those other areas that they're butting up against are correct, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm very aware, like, that's like a system that is extremely sensitive to the initial state of what are you su assuming is correct and not correct. It's like, so I read a couple books about the interstate system, you know, in preparation for this video, which again, you don't know like where you're going to find in interesting stuff ahead of time. You can only know by like reading through the books. 
And it can just be a red flag where, where someone will like mention something about the interstate and you go like, that just doesn't seem to fit with other things that I think are true. And then you sort of dig into this and you go, oh, okay. It's like more complicated than was portrayed in this book. That's weird though, right? Do you see the weirdness in that, that you're coming along and making a piece of content about a certain subject area that will probably become the most consumed thing about that subject area? And there are people that are either considered to be or consider themselves to be experts, but then you have to judge them. Oh, yeah. No, that's, but this it's is what weird, I mean right? by like, like the totally crazy pressure yeah. of this. Like, we're, as we're laying this out, I'm like, oh boy, that sounds horrible. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Why do you do this? <laughs> you should just make the outside ones. Forget all this nonsense. Yeah. So, so th- like, this is, this is one of the reasons why, you know, the past few episodes we've been talking about, like, thinking about future production and thinking about a bunch of stuff. And one of the things that I was going through and my feeling tapped out about video production was, it's like at this point in my writing career as well, like I just have I have a ton of, of video topics to choose from, lots of which are 20 percent to 40 percent complete because I've done like some initial research and it seems interesting. But the problem is there are there are so many things that seem interesting and simple until you ask three questions in a row about that topic. And then you go, oh, this is not as it seems. And it can be just like hugely dispiriting about the world in trying to think through like, what do you think is true? And what do you think is true enough that you're willing to say it to like a million people? I think back to when I first started doing this, it is laughable to me about how relatively carefree and breezy I was and just how even that old past gray felt like he was cautious about sources and even that old past gray already knew like oh well don't you know don't use a newspaper as a source that's worse than nothing current gray looks at him and is like oh kid you don't have any idea how bad this is going to get yeah it's it's a very strange situation and so it it is one of these areas where lots of topics i feel like boy if i could lighten up on this I could make lots of topics so much more easily than I currently can, but it's, it's, it's very hard to lighten up on this. And just when videos go out to a big audience, like it just, it is a pressure that ends up really like building on itself over time. I mean, I can sympathize with this a little, like, so I kind of, I understand what you're saying. There are things that I say or topics that I've covered where I've ended up thinking, oh, this is a good idea. And then it comes out that there's like people disagree with it or have like a difference of opinion. Or, you know, there are certain things I know that if I say them, I'm going to get a lot of pushback for it. Mm -hmm. But this is like just a thing that you learn over time. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of weird. It's like, I kind of think of this as, as, this is a very strange metaphor that I'm trying to build here, but like a, a stone can be eroded over time right so like we are the stones in this and the erosion is like feedback and it can have two effects where it can either smooth you to it or it can make things more jagged and so like this is where i'm saying like sometimes there's like a thing that i know if i want to talk about this i'm going to get a lot of feedback on it and like this is me accepting that and over time, like that part is just smoothed out and I'm just, all right, fine. I understand what's going to happen here. I'm just going to go for it. There is either going to be a lot of difference of opinion or on the good side, a lot of people that are agree- will agree with me, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But then there's like this other part of it where you don't even realize that something you're about to do, which is innocuous to you, mm-hmm. is going to either be A, wrong, and you're going to hear about that a lot. <laughs> or B, you figured this was just a, an opinion that lots of people have, but it turns out a lot of people just disagree with you. And that's where it like gets jagged. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of about trying to make that erosion over time completely smoothed out. And that can either be by accepting things or understanding them fully, correcting them, researching them over time, right? And so I have this on like a way smaller degree for a bunch of reasons. Like one, I don't purport to be an expert on anything. Mm-hmm. It's actually kind of my entire career is not being an expert in anything, but being interested in a bunch of things and talking to people who are more experts than me. Mm. So like that part doesn't really bother me. If I don't understand it, whatever. 
like I'm learning like everybody else, but also like just the scale of people that consume my content is so much smaller than yours. And then also I think the thing that is a benefit for me is the vast majority of people that are listening to my shows know me to some degree. Yes, yeah. And let me off more because they know me, right? They're like, I say a thing and it's wrong and they're like, Mike, you got that wrong, but it's very rarely like you idiot because they know me. They're like, you know, they, they know that like, oh, I said this thing incorrectly or I made a mistake, that it was a mistake. They're like maybe like more willing to accept that. But you get so many people that watch your YouTube channel, they don't know you. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a whole different thing. Or like even if they watch all your videos, this type of content like podcasts and stuff, people get much more of a sense of the person. Mm -hmm. And so I think can be kinder in that way. Where like even just like people that have watched your videos for years, maybe still don't have that much of a sense of your personality as they would get through just listening to you talk for an hour or two once a month you know yeah for sure and so like people i think are maybe a bit more ah this is, you're stupid like why did you say this or like you know so my point is I, I feel like i can understand a little bit what you're talking about but it i, I can see how it's way way harsher and it's, it's a thing I've, I've i've talked to other creators about like i think anyone who's in the educational field on youtube everyone experiences this to some extent or another mm -hmm. which is you get started in this because you're really just interested in a bunch of stuff and you want to talk about it and like the the problem is as time goes on in a way i would love to start every video off with hey i've spent a lot of time researching this this is the best version of this that i can do but also you know like i'm not an expert in the interstate system i'm not a transportation engineer i am a person who just spends a lot of time on his own reading in a room. That's what I am. And like, I try to turn this into an interesting thing for other people to watch. You can't do that in front of every video. It's horrifically boring. It just doesn't work. There's this phenomenon, like I don't have a good word for this. People can put on you a level of expertise that you yourself are not claiming. And the only way to try to push back against that is to constantly remind people that you're not an expert in a way that I personally find just tedious and annoying and, and not worth doing. I mean, and it also devalues the work that you've done too. Yeah, exactly. I think if anyone watches a bunch of educational YouTubers, you will see people do this. This is the reason why people will in their videos just be like, I'm just an idiot who doesn't know anything, right? And they'll just say this. And like, I hate it. I hate it yeah. when creators do that. Me too. But I also understand why creators are doing that because they're trying to push back mm -hmm. both for the audience and I also think for themselves, the ever mounting pressure. Oh, I think it's vastly weighted towards the person, not the audience. And it's not a criticism because I do it. Mm -hmm. But it's just like if you constantly get a certain type of feedback like ultimately it changes you because you mm. want to stop getting that feedback if you don't like it and this is also in the inverse as well if you keep getting feedback which is good and you keep doing more of that more people like it like, mm. and just like, this is like super you know good problem to have kind of problem right yeah of course but it's still a tough thing to deal with when creating content especially at the level that you're at right yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I just did it. Okay, so what I've just done, this is an example of the exact thing that I'm talking about, mm. where I feel like if I didn't say this, what I just said, people would go, oh, nice for you. Yeah, exactly. And th I, that is what I, that is a reflex that I have, mm -hmm. where I feel like I have to say it because of the feedback that I would otherwise see of like, Look at these guys complaining about how terrible their lives are when they have these dream jobs, which mm -hmm. we know. Mm -hmm. Now, I would love to believe that inherently people understand that in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Most people do, I think. The vast majority of people do. But it tends to be that there is a minority of people, it is the quote-unquote vocal minority, who mm -hmm. will tell you and will complain up to you about you. And over time, that is like the erosion 
where I feel like I can't have a conversation like this without giving that disclaimer. Yeah, there's nothing more frustrating than listening to someone who issues a disclaimer before every one of their sentences. Yeah. Because I know but I just said that. There are people that are like, all right, I get it. Or you don't have to you don't have to say this. I understand. I'm not an idiot. Right. Yeah. I understand. And, yeah, and you can you can hear people sometimes in the public arena get completely consumed by this disease where they issue a disclaimer in front of every sentence mm -hmm. and it's it makes them just interminable to listen to. Yep. And this is talking about like creating content that I know a younger me would be interested in. Us having this conversation on this podcast, I think for most listeners the, the interesting part of this is hearing about the actual true behind the scenes what is it like to be a person who makes these videos and this is one of these things that it has been very present in my life especially since tikoi but even without tikoi it would have happened anyway of this gradual ratcheting up of pressure from both inside and outside that can make projects just way harder Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's totally the byproduct of having a very successful YouTube channel. But it doesn't change the fact that like, oh, would you like to know what this is like? Here's one of the things that you might not have considered that there's this ratchet that just increases over time. This is one of the things that it's like to do this. My assumption is, or the assumption that I wish I would remember more, is that the people listening to this show probably fall into vast majority of them fall into a couple of categories these are people that do make stuff or people that want to yeah or people that are just interested in what it, the life of the people that are content creators mm -hmm. and it, you know sometimes i think it would be easier if i could remember that but you know if you've listened to this conversation and you are an aspiring or starting out content creator i think the thing that is important not to take away from this is that you need to be an expert do what we were saying or what Gray was saying he was doing at the beginning where it was research but not exhaustive like what he does, right? Because the point is still that you can do enough when you're starting out and be quote-unquote correct enough and do the thing because if you try and do things to Gray's level when you're beginning, you're never going to get started. You just won't, but you don't need to. This is the thing that happens when you reach that point. Mm -hmm. I just feel like that's the thing that if I'm thinking, if we're, this is a very meta, like we're like 17 levels deep into this at the at this moment. Mm. But I'm like, if I'm thinking about like who listens to this show or who we expect listens to this show, what are they going to take away from this? Mm. I wouldn't want people to be like, oh man, I'm never going to finish this video if that's what I have to do. I also think part of the value is also just understanding what may be coming down the line. Mm. This is one of these cases where I had this at the start of my career from knowing like, oh, what is it like to actually be a famous person? And you go, oh, there's lots of things about that that are really terrible that people who are famous will not talk about in public for these sorts of reasons. They just know they'll get terrible feedback about like, oh, listen to you complaining about your amazing life. I feel like that has turned a little bit in the last few years. Or like a little, like at least just, I think that seeing the beginning of a change, and like I think sport is especially a place where it's coming out, like mental health in sport, I think is it really starting to see a crest here. This has been happening quite a bit in tennis, especially in the last maybe year or two. Mm -hmm. There's been a couple of very famous tennis players who have been talking about their mental health issues and how it's affecting them on the court. You know, I'm a big F1 fan and it's happening there a little bit more now too of people being open with the fact that it can be really hard to do what they do in a way that still a lot of people reject and they're just like, just shut up and play the sport kind of thing. But where I see that there is more understanding from younger people, just in general, the, the generation below us is much more in tune with mental health as a thing, which I think is really good. But I think it's allowing for some people in the public eye to start actively talking about what it is like and for that to be accepted more. Like I feel like it's... We're still a long way away, I think, from a celebrity being able to openly talk about how their life can be hard because they're a celebrity. 
because I think there is just this natural thinking of like, you are rich and famous. What more could you want? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I file that example under the like, quote, unacceptable in quotes thing that is acceptable actually to talk about. I mean, the sorts of things that people will just not talk about in public. Oh, know, I know. Sort of, but yeah. I, what my, my, my point more is there will always be that way because that's just people, right? There will always be stuff that you say behind closed doors kind of thing. But it's more that I think that there is starting to become more of an acceptable change for people to say stuff because a period of time ago, that was unacceptable to say mm. that my life as a celebrity can be hard because mm. of my fame, right? Like I feel like that is a thing that was unacceptable to say. So my point is just that mm. it is changing. The mental health part of it is becoming more acceptable to suffer with and talk about, right? Uh, rather than like, hey, I have these problems and I feel like I can't talk to anyone about them or speak about them in, in open at all. But yeah, of course, there will always be difficulties and things that people will go through that they won't talk about in public. That's just life. Yeah. Just in case people are desperately wanting to know like what the kind of stuff is that I'm talking about, I'll just mention that Tim Ferriss actually has a really interesting article oh, about God, being not famous. To... Oh, God. I know you're going ha- to hate it, all but right, he's, right. he's, he's like, it. he's the example of what are the kinds of things that people just don't want to talk about, right? So I hate doing this kind of thing where it's like you're not saying things in front of the audience and then oh my the, God. leads people is to wonder. Is the article 11 Reasons Not to Become Famous? I don't know what the title of the article is off the top of my head. I I'll mean, it probably the is. But like, <laughs> the fact that it's a listicle is just like, <laughs> my God. Well, I mean, look, I mean, look you've got to optimize for SEO, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, like... I, I did not intend to really get off on this major tangent because it's it's funny. Like I actually picked this topic precisely because it has the fewest number of these sorts of problems. Yeah. The numbering system for the interstate is, I don't know, as close to math as the topic can get where it's like, yeah, this was just a plan that some people made. And here, let me explain what the plan is. And it has the smallest number of places where this can go wrong. Whereas one of the videos I've been working on for a very long time now that I just don't know if it will ever see the light of day is is a video that is related to history. Mm. And it's just one of those videos where it's really dispiriting because every part you dig into, you can go, oh, but is that true? Like, what is the actual source for this? How do we know that this is the case? And it's like, I really like what this video could be, but it has been now years in the works and just constantly runs up against this, oh, what is true problem? Oh, also, I'm not an expert in this period of history. And so now let me tell you, if there's something that experts can disagree on, it's history and then like okay i've got to try to make a call about what is the reasonable way to describe this or what are the parts to skip over and then you also just have the like everybody always wants you to talk about everything issue as well which is it is a funny thing with this video on the interstate stuff because here's another example of this reverse problem where lots of people left comments where they're like Oh, but you sh- you should have talked about how the mile markers work. That the mile markers are showing you like how far along on the, on the highway you are and all of this kind of stuff. And it's like, yes, I understand that you want me to talk about the mile markers, but actually they're different in every single state. And so the like, oh, you left out this interesting piece of information comments are missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't actually work consistently everywhere. So this idea that you have of the mile markers are useful as a navigational guide. It's like, I didn't talk about that because it's not true. And they frequently change just at the state borders. So it's just even on a relatively straightforward topic, there's just an endless amount of stuff like this. And it is also why like on publication day, it's always a huge relief. But there's always this feeling of like, oh, God, I hope I just didn't mess up something real bad that i didn't even know about and you never know until it goes out 